Hello everybody, today we're going to work on some class practice problems on the various gas laws that we have learned and uh, this first problem here is actually a warm-up <clears throat> what it is is a warm-up showing you some pressure conversions and if you look at the question they want us to convert atmospheric uh, pressure in millimeters of mercury if you notice the question says we have 722 millimeters of mercury and they want us to, con uh, to convert that into tors, ATMs, and kilopascals. Now I don't know if you remember this from the equation sheet but a millimeter of mercury and a tor are equal. <clears throat> In one tor there's one millimeter of mercury so if you were to set this up okay uh, basically this is how the conversion factor would be written and the answer would be 722 tors. You probably didn't have to show work for this one because they are equivalent. However, look at this next one. Let's do the same math and let's convert millimeters of mercury into ATMs. According to your <clears throat> conversion uh, sheet, it says that for every one ATM, there are 760 millimeters of mercury. And if you cancel out here and you divide the 722 by 760, you get 0.95. And I'm going to put a zero here <clears throat> because I'm going to have a third significant digit. Okay, this should have three significant digits. And this would be my answer in ATMs. Now, the next problem, they want us to convert millimeters of mercury into kPa. Now, in, this one must be done in two steps. First, you would have to convert millimeters of mercury into ATM. If you notice, we just did that in the previous problem. And then from there, we would have to convert from ATM to kilopascals. Since we already have the first step from millimeters of mercury to ATMs done, let's do the second step. Let's take it from here. We're already at ATMs from the previous step. So what the conversion factor from your sheet is that in one ATM, there are 101.325 kilopascals. And if you multiply these two numbers and then we'll round to three significant digits, you will get an answer of 96.3 kilopascals. And this, these three values are the equivalent of 722 <clears throat> um, millimeters of mercury. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. <clears throat> In this problem, you are told that you got 20 liters of hydrogen. So let's call that the initial volume, 20 liters. It says that you are heating it from 25 to 450.5 degrees Celsius. So your original temperature is 25 and we're going to heat that up to a new temperature of 450 .50 degrees Celsius, they want us to calculate the new volume. Notice pressure is not even mentioned, okay? That's because this is a Charles Law problem, okay? So now, um, the formula for Charles's Law would be V1, initial volume over initial temperature is equal to final volume over final temperature. We are looking for the final volume. Now, the most important thing here is to remember that in all gas laws, the temperatures must be in Kelvin. So the, maybe one of the first things you want to do is convert to Kelvin by adding 273. And the original temperature would be in Kelvin, it would be 298. And the final temperature would be 723.5. Okay? And these are your values in Kelvin. These are the values you're going to put into the formula. Now, when you do the algebra, if you uh, were to cross multiply these two and then divide by T1, you'll get V2. And algebraically, V2 will be equal to V1 times T2, which is the cross multiplication, and then divide by T1. At this point, all we need to do is now substitute, since we isolated our variable, 
and V2 would be equal to the original <clears throat> volume times the final temperature here, T2. Then you're going to divide that by the original temperature. You'll see that the Kelvins will indeed cancel, okay, just like that. And you're going to get a final volume of four, uh, 48 0.6 liters and it has three significant digits okay notice this also confirms our theory when you're doing a Charles law problem remember that if the temperature goes up <clears throat> the volume should also go up and it did it went from 20 liters to 48.6 so the, th the math is confirming our theory okay moving on to the next problem <clears throat> We have a 250 milliliter sample of helium, so that would be our original volume, 250 milliliters. <clears throat> it's at a pressure, you could tell by the units, 722 millimeters of mercury, and it's going to be compressed, so the new pressure is going to be 3.60 atms. They want to know what would be the new volume. And notice temperature is not mentioned here because this is a Boyle's law problem. In a Boyle's law problem, we're comparing pressure versus volume and temperature is constant. Now the formula for Boyle's law is P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. We are looking for V2, so the algebra is pretty simple. If you do P1 times V1 divided by P2, you'll get the final volume. Now notice that the pressure units are not the same. Now if you remember from example one, uh, we had converted 722 millimeters of mercury into ATMs. Since we already have that number, it's probably easier if we convert millimeters of mercury to ATMs. Okay, that was the equivalent. Now, you could have changed ATMs to millimeters of mercury. It doesn't really matter which one you convert as long as they're both the same. In this case, it was easier to convert millimeters of mercury to ATMs so that they're both in ATMs since we had already done that earlier. So, let's do the math. <clears throat> Here's our formula. Let's plug in the numbers. So, P1 is 722. I'm sorry, that's 722. We're going to use the ATMs. It's 0.950 ATMs. And your original volume is 250.0 milliliters. We're going to go ahead and divide that by 3.60. And that's going to give us our final volume. And if you notice again, the units will cancel. And we're going to round this to three significant digits. I get 65.97, but when you round that, you get 66.0 milliliters as your final volume. And if you notice, this one is inversely proportional. So notice how the pressure um, went from 0.950 atms to 3.60. The pressure went up, okay? And it even tells you in the problem that you're compressing the gas. So that means that if the pressure is going up, the volume must be going down. And it did. It went from 250 to 66. So the volume did go down. Again, the math confirms the theory. Let's move on to our next problem, number four. <clears throat> Here we got a 10 liter sample of helium gas. So that's going to be our original volume. And you'll notice I'm always putting the givens here. You're heating it from 273.15 Kelvin. So the original temperature is already in Kelvin. You're heating it. Notice the volume goes to 25. And pretty much what they want us to do is to find this new temperature. Now pay attention. They want the new temperature, but they want it specifically in Celsius. Now when you do the math, you're not going to get the temperature in Celsius. It's going to come out in Kelvin, but then we do an extra step and we change it back to Celsius. If you notice, the pressure is not even mentioned. It's constant. This is another Charles 
law problem. And if you recall, the formula for Charles' law is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. We are looking this time for temperature. So if you cross multiply T1 and V2 and then you divide by V1, that's how you'll solve for the final temperature. So let's plug in the numbers. First, we have 273.15, that this is our original temperature in Kelvin. We're gonna multiply that by the volume, which is 25.0 liters. Then we're gonna divide by 10 liters. And again, units will cancel. But you'll notice that our temperature will come out in Kelvin. In fact, it, it's 682.88 Kelvin. But what we got to do is, they don't want the answer in Kelvin, so we're going to have to subtract by 273 so we can convert our answer into Celsius. Now I get 409.88. We're going to go ahead and round that to show three significant digits. And the answer that we're going to get is 410. Put a decimal point here to make that zero significant. And this would be our answer in Celsius. But if you look at the Kelvin, <clears throat> when the volume goes up, that's a result of temperature going up. Notice how volume goes up and so does temperature because in Charles's law, temperature and volume are directly proportional. So again, the math is confirming the theory. Let's move on to example number five. <clears throat> in this example, we have a little bit more information. We got a volume here of 10 liters. We have a pressure of 836 tors. It is heated to, or it's heated from, so the original temperature here is 20. Remember, we're going to have to convert this to Kelvin anyway, so I might as well do it now. Um, you cannot forget to do that. The math always has to be in Kelvin. And then we got the new volume is 15 liters, as you can see here. The new temperature is 100 degrees and notice again it's in Celsius so let's add 273 and we'll make that 373 Kelvin and in this problem we're looking for the pressure notice there are five <clears throat> variables given and one missing there's no constants here this is the combined gas law now if you remember the combined gas law looks like this it's P1 V1 over T1 equals to final pressure, final volume, final temperature. Now there's a trick that I showed you where if you cross multiply P1, V1, and T1, which would give me, I'll write this over here, P1, V1, and T2, just like that, okay, that it will be equal to <clears throat> multiplying T1, cross multiplying the other three, which would be T1, P2 and V2. Now in this problem, they're asking us for P2. So since I made this linear, look how much easier <clears throat> this equation is. If I isolate P2, here's my working equation. It would look like this. It would be P1, V1, T2 divided by T1 and V2. I'm isolating P2 by bringing T1 and V2 dividing to the other side of the equation. And that's how I get my P2. <clears throat> now be very careful. It's important to label everything. So let's substitute our values. <clears throat> so for P1, we'll start over here. We got 836 tors. We're going to multiply that by the initial volume, which is 10 liters. And then it says here that T2 is 373 Kelvin. And then we're going to go ahead and divide that by T1, which is 293 Kelvin. And 15 liters, <clears throat> which would be V2. And if you look at the units, the Kelvins will cancel, the liters will cancel. 
that you're going to get your pressure in torus, which is fine. Okay? Now, when you do the math and you multiply the numerator, the numerator, all these three numbers at the top gives me, let's see if I can fit this right down here, 3, 1, 1, 8, 2, 8, 0, and the bottom is 4, 3, 9, 5, and when I divide those numbers, I get 709.5. What I'm going to do is round that to three significant digits, so 709.5 will round to 710. I'm going to put a decimal point to make that significant, and the answer will be in torus. And that will be our answer to this problem. This is the combined gas law. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to question number six. <clears throat> question number six, we have a volume of five liters. Write your givens. Okay, very important. Be organized. Now, notice it says it's at STP. If you recall from an earlier lesson, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. So... At STP, the temperature, if it's at STP, would be at zero Celsius, but we don't use Celsius. So let me fix this over here, kind of messy. So we don't use Celsius, we use Kelvin. So zero plus 273 is just 273 Kelvin. And the pressure, if you recall, is one ATM. So these are our two STP conditions. Now, according to this, is heated so that the final pressure, so here's P2, the new pressure is 2.50 atms. The new temperature is 75.50. That we're going to have to change, so <clears throat> we're going to add 273. We've got to change that to Kelvin. So when I change that to Kelvin, that will be 348. 0.5 Kelvin, and in this problem, we're looking for the volume, okay? Now, the combined gas law, again, if you remember from the previous example, <clears throat> when you cross-multiply uh, the original equation, you're going to end up getting P1, V1, and T2 equals T1, P2, V2. This time we're looking for V2. So when you isolate V2, here's our working equation. It's going to look like this. It's going to be P1, V1, T2, divided by T1 and P2, just like that. And that'll isolate our volume. <clears throat> okay? Now, we already made our necessary conversions. So at this point, we can simply substitute the numbers. And if you look at P1, our P1 is just 1 ATM because it's at STP. Our V1 is 5 liters. And our T2 is 348.5 Kelvin. And then we're going to divide that by T1, which is 273 Kelvin. And here is our final pressure at 2.50 ATMs. And when you do the math, that's going to give you your volume. And again, notice how the Kelvins will cancel. Okay. And if, if you look here, so will the uh, ATMs. <clears throat> and our answer will come out in liters, which is fine. That's what volume is. Now, when you multiply the top three numbers, the numerator ends up being 1742. Let me, let me fix that up a little bit. That looks a little bit messy. 174. 2.5 and then the denominator is 682.5 and uh, that's going to give me a final volume and I'll write it over here of I'm going to round it to three significant digits and when I round that to three significant digits I get 2.55 liters as my final answer now again this is another combined gas law problem Okay, let's go to the next problem, <clears throat> number seven. So notice this time you see grams. First time we see one with grams, okay? The only formula so far that we've learned that has 
anything that might have to do with grams is Avogadro's law, which has moles as part of the formula. So look what I'm going to do. Um, you know that if, if you have an Avogadro's law problem, you're going to have to change grams to moles, which is very simple. What you do is you divide by the molar mass of, um, of the element. In this case, it's oxygen. Now, be very careful. Look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to convert the grams into moles. So my original amount of grams is 28.5 grams. Now, oxygen, and this is very important, is diatomic. So the molar mass is 32, okay, grams per mole. So if I divide 28.5 divided by 32 grams per mole, which is the atomic mass of uh, oxygen gas being diatomic, I'm going to go ahead and convert that to moles, and I end up getting, and I'll, and I'll keep it with three significant digits, I get 0.891 moles, okay? Now, it says that it occupies a volume of 12.5 liters at 25 degrees Celsius. They want to know what volume will it will 48.7 grams of oxygen occupy. So we don't know what the new volume is going to be, but we do know that the number of moles is different. Um, it's going to be 48.7 grams. We're going to have to change that to moles. So we're going to, again, divide, and this is very important, divide by the molar mass of oxygen. So the grams will cancel over here. And when you convert that to moles, you get 1.52 moles. And they want to know what would be the volume. Now, this is, imagine a balloon and you're blowing air into it. You're adding more oxygen gas into the balloon. According to <clears throat> Avogadro's law, which, you know, the formula, let me write the formula for you right over here. If the number of moles increases... Okay, which means if you're adding air into a balloon, the balloon's going to expand. So the formula is initial volume divided by initial moles is equal to final volume divided by final moles. We are clearly looking for the new volume. Now, a prediction here is if I'm adding more moles, the volume should go up. Now, let's do the math and find out. First, let's isolate V2. We're going to cross multiply. So V2 will be found by cross-multiplying V1 times N2 and then divide by N1. Now that we isolated V2, let's go ahead and do the math, okay? So V1, the original volume is 12.5 liters. The final number of moles, or N2, is 1.52 moles. And then we're going to go ahead and divide that by 0.8 nine one moles so that we can get our final volume so again these units will cancel and when we do the math here and we round it to uh, three significant digits you're gonna see that our final volume ends up being 21.3 liters and that makes sense because if you add more moles, the volume should go up, and it did. It went from 12.5 to 21.3. Okay, so let's go to our last problem. <clears throat> Here we have a gas at 33.5 degrees Celsius, so the temperature is given first here, and we are going to convert that into Kelvin. That's one of the, you could do it right at the beginning or before you actually do the math. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. That ends up being 306.5 Kelvin. Okay. And it says here that the pressure, so let me write that down. The original pressure is 788 millimeters of mercury. Okay. And then the temperature increases to 45.5. Let's change that also. To Kelvin and that ends up being 318.5 and they want to know what would be the new pressure now notice it even tells you assume that volume is constant this is an example of Gay-Lussac's problem okay let's write that down over here 
and Gay-Lussac's law is that pressure and temperature are directly proportional as long as that volume is constant. So if the temperature is going up, which it is in this, in this problem here, the pressure should also be going up. So what I'm going to do here is let's write the formula, okay? The formula for Gay-Lussac's law is that initial pressure times initial temperature is equal to final pressure over final temperature. In this problem, we are looking for P2. So let's isolate P2. So again, to find P2, what we do is we cross multiply P1 and T2 first, and then we divide by T1, and then we isolated our variable. Now the next part is, now that we have all our temperatures converted into Kelvin, we can, we're ready to, to uh, substitute. So our P1, our original pressure, is 788 millimeters of mercury. Our final temperature is 318.5 Kelvin. And we're going to go ahead and divide that by the original um, temperature, which is 306.5 Kelvin. And when we do the math, this will give us our final pressure. Again, notice the units will cancel. Okay, now our prediction was that the temperature goes up, so should the pressure. When you do the math and you solve for the final pressure, it's going to come out in millimeters of mercury. I'm going to round it to three significant digits, and I end up getting 819 millimeters of mercury. And the pressure did go up from 788 to 819. And that would be our, our final answer. Okay, very good.